Hey everybody, and welcome to another APA style results video. In this video, we are going to finish up our factorial design sequence here, and we are going to talk mixed subjects, factorial designs, where you put stuff, how you report it, all that good stuff, as I've done in my previous videos. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get a bit of data that we can use to set up our factorial design output uh, and put the words in the right places. Now, this one's gonna go a little bit faster than the previous ones because you may have seen in a previous video, if you haven't looked at that one, that's fine too, but uh, I, did, I had a little bit of a recording boo-boo. So um, in one video, I ended up having two layers of my voice on top of each other in, this, in a single track, and that gave the audio an echo that I could not remove. And so I am re-recording this. All right. So the text is going to come up a lot faster in um, this video than it has in the other ones because I've already generated the text. So I'm essentially going to copy and paste from another document and uh, each paragraph and then talk a little bit about what is there and go back and forth between the output and the um, the, the writing, I suppose, the, in, in here in Word, that kind of stuff. So it's this, this video is going to move a lot faster than the previous ones, but I'll be sure to to slow down in for each of the paragraphs uh, and talk about them as I have in the past. Okay, so let's get a new uh, new data set open here. The data set that I am going to use comes from the Learning Statistics with Jamovi uh, data set. It's uh, LSJ data somewhere in here. Uh, I can't remember exactly where it is, but it's there. I mean, you can go to your Manage Installed and then search for LSJ and it'll come right up. So LSJ Learning Statistics with Jamovi. We're going to use that data set. Uh, we're going to use the data set from those folks. So we go to open, we go to data library. It's already there. I'm not doing CETA. I am doing the LSJ. There it is. Oopsies. When you do, it's a single click and you, oh, you do it. And it's just, we're not doing this one. <laughs> we are going to go with Barocas. Where are you, Barocas? Baroca, Baroca, there it is. So we're going to open that and we're going to bring it in here. We're going to bring AFL margins and just get those out of the way. And then we're going to option this and tile it that way. There we go. All right, so here we have six participants, and then each of them have a uh, value here. Now, I don't, I added 10 participants, so seven, eight, nine, and 10. I added four more participants, and I don't know what their values are here. So when I copy the, uh, the text over, uh, from there, we're going to have to make some modifications because I am going to be making additional data in this so we can do a mixed factorial. So here I'm just going to say six, seven, eight, oops, that's not an eight, eight, and uh, Dang it, seven, there we go. And then we're going to do a five, a six, oops, that's a 66, seven, and eight. And then here we're going to do two, three, one, and four. How about that? Just to make sure that syntax ends up being the reason why these people are indicated as having broker's aphasia. But let's say that they were put into two different groups. So we're going to start a new data variable, and we're going to call this one group. And it's going to be nominal and integer. And we're just going to cut this in half. We're going to do one, oops, one. I keep doing that. One, one, and two, 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 and two. Okay. And I'm not going to label these because, you know, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to go ahead and do that. We're going to close this. Okay. So this is our between subjects variable. And these three are levels of our repeated measures variable. Now, if you want to grab a, another video on how to do this a little bit more fully, uh, I, do, uh, I do suggest that, of course. So I'm going to do this really quickly. This is not the video to get all of the nuance in how to do a mixed factor factorial, mixed uh, subject factorial. So, you know, just keep that in mind. All mixed subjects, uh, mixed subject factorials have to go through the repeated measures ANOVA thing. Um, this is the uh, speech test and level is going to be speech, conceptual and syntax. Okay. And I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to just put those in in the same order over here. Oops. Uh, speech can, for some reason, it did not do what I wanted it to do. And then I'm going to go ahead and put group into the between subjects factors, because that's how we're going to get the between, uh, if there was any difference between one uh, groups one and group two. There shouldn't be, but we'll see. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get partial eta here. Um, let's get our sphericity test just to make sure looks good right there, but we'll leave it up. And then let's get our estimated marginal means. Let's do speech test. We'll get group and then we'll get speech test and group as the interaction term. We'll get the tables and we'll change these to standard errors. And I think that's all. Oh, well, I guess we'll want to get a speech test uh, post hoc test. To, to help us out and we'll, we'll do Bonferroni because that has three levels and we'll see whether or not that's the case. Okay, so let's take a look here. Let's pull that over. All right, so within subjects effects, so our speech test, our three variables there are gonna be in this box and then our interaction between our two variables, speech test and group are also gonna be in this table. And then our group is gonna be here in the between subjects effects table group, okay? And uh, things are looking kind of like what I had before. So that's good. Uh, Mockley's test of sphericity is fine. This p-value is plenty big, so we did not violate sphericity, the assumption of sphericity. Essentially, the uh, homogeneity of variance in our three tests, speech, conceptual, 
and syntax. Okay, so they're pretty much uh, homogeneous in their variants. This is our postdoc test for the speech test. So we're comparing speech to each of the other two, and then we're comparing conceptual to syntax. And our Bonferroni is a corrected value. And it tells us that syntax tests for these 10 participants, these 10 patients who have some kind of aphasia, seemingly re reflecting that syntax is the reason for the deficit. Okay. And then here is our group difference. And you can see that there is no real difference there. And then you can see here that there really isn't an interaction. These look like they are uh, intersecting. These, these imaginary lines look like they're intersecting. But essentially, they're not because the difference here, and we don't have a significant interaction. They In this graph, they look here is because the two dots are, are made to look offset from other, one another. And so that changes the trajectory of the uh, lines. But you can see here that, you know, uh, group one has a steady decline and group two has a you know, fairly similar steady decline here. Maybe it's a little bit more pronounced if we look at the drop from conceptual to syntax, but it's not that big of a difference. 4.4 to 2.8 might be closer if we had more than 10 participants, but in this case, it is not. So let's go ahead and set up our design here. Uh, now, these are the details that I would have in my previous sections of the method, for example, right? We would say that the design is a two by three mixed subjects factorial. Now you can put a hyphen there if you really wanted to. It doesn't matter, although it it, it makes word feel a little bit better that you put a hyphen, it's fine. Uh, and we're gonna set our IV1, this two, as group. I usually put the between subjects factor in, or the between subjects IV as IV1 as the first number here, but I don't think there's any specific APA rule for that. And then so IV2 or factor two is my three, right? And that's the speech test that I did. The DV is the score on each of these speech tests. I believe it's a score between one and 10. But of course, these, these data were made up by Danielle Foxcroft. So, you know, take <laughs> uh, uh, Danielle Navarro, excuse me. Um, uh, not Danielle Foxcroft, my bad. Uh, Danielle Navarro made these up. So, you know, just take that what you will. But the score, I think we can assume that the scale is from either zero to 10 or one to 10 or something like that. And then we have an N of 10. OK, so this is what we would have from our previous method section. Now, to set us up here, we're going to write in results and uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, that's right. This is size 14. Let's change that to size. Oops, 14. And let's make that for everything. OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up our design here. And again, this is from a previous document that I created. So rather than retype, I'm just going to copy paste. So a two by three mixed subjects factorial analysis, or we could put a hyphen there, although word apparently isn't screaming at me. Analysis of variance, ANOVA, was conducted to determine the main effects of group and speech test on Broca's aphasia patients scores. And so you can see here I've got patients and then S apostrophe because it is a possessive, it is a plural possessive of a plural. Right. So patients scores to determine if the patient's scores indicate true Broca's aphasia and its impact on producing speech. And that's the whole thing with syntax words in the wrong order. OK, so we'll get there. The next paragraph that I'm going to do is talk about the main effect of group. And then I'll do a separate paragraph for the main effect of speech. So let's do main effect of group. OK, so I'm going to grab this paragraph and then I'll plop it in here. OK, patients in group one. So again, these data are going to change. So we'll go ahead and change those in just a second. So what I did was I set up group one and then I'm going to put means and standard deviations in parentheses right after did not show any significant difference. Right. Not. And that comes from this P value right here. 0.689. OK, it's actually quite, it's actually a little different from what it was last week when I recorded this. OK, any significant difference when compared to patients in group two means and standard deviations followed by the F statistics. So let's go ahead and replace the values in the F statistics since we get that from this table here. OK, from all of this information. OK, the only thing we don't have to change is the degrees of freedom because we have one eight, one eight. But we got to change our F. Our F is a little bit smaller than last time. Instead of one point eight, eight, it's point zero point one seven. That's what we're going to do. Zero point one seven. So my numbers were even farther off than last time. And P, I usually put three decimal points because that's what we have here. Point six, eight, nine. 0.689. And the partial eta squared is even smaller than last time. Of course, that is what's going to happen here. 0 0.02. So we're going to change that to point oh two. There we go. So let's change our means and standard deviations. Now, how you do that is you go to the means and you have to calculate your standard deviation by converting the standard error. So again, uh, if you ha if you're not familiar, standard error equals the standard deviation by uh, divided by the square root of n. OK, so if we are going to use some algebra here to get standard deviation, then the standard deviation equals the standard error times oops, times the square root of n. OK. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my calculator. Uh, so let's grab this here. We're going to use this data here. I ended up with the same mean for group one. That's incredible. OK, uh, but my mean for group two is a little bit bigger. OK, so we're going to change that to 5.53. 
um, you can see that standard deviation is the same, and that's because we're using the same standard error value. So I'm only going to do this calculation once. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of n first in our calculator, and then we're going to multiply it by 0.455. Okay, so let's do 10, and then we're going to go to the square root button is 3.16, and then we're going to multiply that by 0.455. And we're going to hit equals, and that's 1.44. So we were pretty close than last time. I'm, as you can see, that I am uh, rounding the 3 to a 4 because the 8 behind it. Okay, and so there we go. That is, so that is our first, gr uh, so that is our first factor, our first main effect as we are calculating it. Um, and I noticed one thing that it's patient scores, but I meant to write patients scores. And it appears that group, we could also capitalize that, that I didn't do last time. It appears that group didn't contribute any changes to the Broca's aphasia scores. Okay. So that is IV1 main effect done. Now we got to do IV effect two, which is speech test, right? This is to compare our speech test, this first line here, okay? And it looks like we've got a pretty big effect. So that's what we're going to do with this next paragraph. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that. We're going to have to, again, make some changes to the uh, outcome here because they're different. Okay, so here you can see that I've set up what I'm talking about. Patients all completed three speech-based tests to confirm their Broca's aphasia, right? So again, we want to make sure that if you're doing this, that you give the diagnosis of Broca's aphasia based on their completion of these three tests. So syntax has a low score, but conceptual and speech itself to be able to the ability to actually just say things um, is intact, right? So patients generally scored highest on the speech subtest, and then I put the means and standard deviation. Scored slightly lower on concept on the conceptual subtest, and here we have that value in the standard deviation, and scored the lowest on the syntax subtest, which confirms a Broca's aphasia main effect for these patients. And then I have my F statistic with the effect size. Post hoc test. That's what we're going to do after we get the extract the data here. Postdoc test with Bonfroni correction showed that syntax subtext was the reason for this effect when compared to the speech subtest, and then we put our t-tests for each of those. So let's go ahead and modify these values. Let's start with the F statistic here. Now, the good news is, is again, we don't have to change our degrees of freedom. So we've got 216, but F changes. We've got a different F, 23.20. I made this effect bigger than last time. 23.20. <laughs> And that P is definitely less than 0 0.001. And our partial eta squared is now 744. But I'm just going to say 0.74. Okay. And then now we need to go back through and modify these means and standard deviations. I'm going to do that from this table. Now, these are different variables. And so they have different measured standard errors, okay, from the data itself. So we're going to be calculating three different standard deviations. So speech has a mean of 7.1, okay? So got, that one got a little bit better than my last time. I'll come back to the standard deviations. Let's do the mean first. Conceptual is 6.3, and then syntax is 3.6. So instead of 7, we change that to a 6. All right, let's calculate our standard errors. Now, I'm going to do this every time just so you can see me doing it. 10, the square root of, and then times 0.4. Leaves us with a standard deviation of 1.26. 1.26 goes there, and then I'm going to go ahead and uh, go back to this and clear. 10 square root, I'm doing conceptual now, times 0.436 equals 1.38, because I'm going to round that, 1.38. And then finally, we've got a 0.5 here, so clear that. 10 square root times 0.5 equals 1.58. So you can see the variance gets a little bit more based on what test we're talking about. Okay, so that first part is different. Now we need to scroll down, or scroll up, excuse me, to the postdoc comparisons, okay? So we have our t-tests, we have our p-values, which were corrected using the Bonferroni method, and we have our degrees of freedom in here, and it tells us that we have, uh, we, you're gonna use eight, so t of eight for each of these, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on the two Bonferroni tests right here. And one thing that I forgot to add in my pre-recording, which is great, because I'm gonna add this, is that I need to say that speech and conceptual compared to each other were, um, were not significant, and I need to put that uh, t-test in there as well. So 5.5, 5.4, 5 so we need to put the right one in here, Bonferroni correction syntax, when compared to speech, speech and syntax. So it's this one, 5.5 .5 is what goes here. And P equals 0 0.002, as you can see here. And the conceptual one is the same, 5, 5.40. And this P value is also 0 0.002. Now I'm gonna add in here when the, oops, speech subtest was compared to the conceptual subtest, there was no difference between patient's scores comma, or following the same structure, T8 equals 1.73, P equals 0.368. Close parenthesis, period, and let's go ahead and italicize these numbers. All right, so that's the speech main effect. 
Now we need to assess the interaction. That's the last paragraph that we're going to do here. Okay. So the interaction, as I said, is not significant. Oops. I wonder, oh, nope. I just did try to do control V on that one. <laughs> so that's this effect here. But we do know that it's not significant. Speech by, by group here. We just travel along here. F is 2.25 and P is 0.142. So definitely not less than 0 0.05. So let's go ahead and grab this paragraph from the previous time I did this. We're going to toss it down here. And I, I did no, no, NOVA instead of ANOVA. Uh, good, good for me. So what I said here is the ANOVA revealed no significant interaction between group and speech test on Broca's aphasia patients scores. And then I put the F stat here. So we're going to use 2 and 14. I don't know where that 16 came from. Oh, this should be also 14 up here. Not sure where 16 came from. 2, 14. And then we're going to put the F statistic in here, 2.25. The interaction was slightly stronger than I did it last, last time. 2.25P is 1 point, or excuse me, not 1 point, 0. 0.142. And the partial eta squared is a much bigger effect than it was last time. So you can imagine this interaction between group would be significant. Group doesn't mean anything, which is so funny. <laughs> to, this is what happens when you do statistics. Garbage in, you get garbage out. For the purposes of this structure, I don't really care about the garbage out, but it's kind of funny that this is a pretty big effect um, for something, uh, for an interaction that means nothing. <laughs> this means the speech test did not interact or depend on which group the patient was in um, on their scores to confirm their diagnosis of Broca's aphasia. Yeah, so if whatever change we made didn't really do much of anything for that participant or part groups of participants. They have that particular aphasia and that's it. So that is how you do a mixed subjects factorial design in APA style. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or other feedback, please leave that in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will put a chi-square up soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.